mostly in life, we're looking at how to make a life. We're also looking at how to make a living, and eventually we have to figure out how to make a retirement. I talked with a woman the other day at a public library not in Hamilton County who literally told me that she was sort of displaced at her age, and it took her a while to grieve the process of her master's in her work and give up what she was hoping for and praying for in a salary in order to take a lesser job where she was punching a clock again, literally having some adult decide what time she had to get there and what time she had to leave and that she couldn't work any overtime even if she wanted to and openly it was sort of good for her and bad for her. And I have to look at our society and say, what are we doing? We are allowing the youthful people of the world to decide who we are in life. How does that work exactly? We have lived long lives, some of us. I myself have talked regularly about approaching age 50. And when I look back over my life and my lifetime of career and what I've done to produce a living and income for myself, I literally have been an entrepreneur since I was probably 9 or 10 years old. And I literally began, like most children do, looking after other folks' kids and did that pretty much all the way through the college years when I came back sometimes and helped a family friend look after her kids while she and her husband went off on romantic getaways all around the world, all around the globe. I'm responsible for saving her son's life in a pool, and he probably doesn't remember that, and she may not remember that, but she was home, but she just said, deal with it, and so I dealt with it. You know, I mean, she watched it happen, but she couldn't do it because of her physical ailment, and I had to handle it. Now, I can't say I do great in crisis, at least back then, and I know when I was working in my early 20s, I was still learning how to handle those things. I had not been a personal parent, but as you become a parent, as you learn to deal with crisis, as you learn to carry on in life, you learn what to do in those situations, and then sometimes you learn to govern yourself. In my case, I'm an old-timer. I like the old-fashioned day minders that you can buy at the office supply store where you can open them up that 11 by <coughs> uh, 17 sort of page and see the entire week right in front of you from 7 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, everything by the quarter hour, and I think that's beautiful what they do. I always kind of complained about Saturdays and Sundays because they didn't allow you the fullness of the day. Maybe they thought that people wouldn't really schedule their time, but if you're really trying to figure out where your time goes, you have to manage your time. Now, all of my schedule books from my entire life have, in the last 10 years, have literally gone missing from my storage unit. I still have someone who is violating federal law, walking in and out of my unit on a regular basis, putting things back that were stolen from my sister's home and literally monkeying in my clothing, literally taking things out that I like and rearranging things and almost in a way of vandalism, damaging intellectual property drives as well as manhandling and ruining antiques and artwork. And I'm finding things that were carefully and lovingly put into certain trunks now hidden underneath furniture. I'm sure the glass is broken by now on those old things. But they had no right to do it. And I'd like to call police, but when you call them, they say, sorry, without a video, we can't prove anything. And I'm sitting there thinking, when do you do investigation to actually look into the people who are managing the place or perform a sting operation where you watch from a distance, you find out who really rented the place originally with the official contract that is signed from the origination and whose property it really is, and then you work out from there. You see, just because someone's paying for something does not necessarily mean they have the right to it. Sometimes in life, people go through challenges and they get someone else to pay for something or gift them something but it doesn't allow that person the right to do anything to that gift, to that money, or to anything else that person owns just because there was a lending of money. In life, we have to look at the realities of the world. We have a big to-do going on right now in the land over the situation with the illegals, the infidels, if you will, down in the Mexico and Texas areas, where they're trying to cross the border, illegally so. Now, I'm not sure I understand why Trump would separate parents from children other than a okay, you're going to put your kids at risk, so we're going to look after them. That might be his mentality, that his parents didn't think about the risks to their children, and therefore maybe they're not really good parents. They didn't think about the unlawfulness of putting a child who's not mature enough to make a decision on their own in that situation, and that can be Trump's mentality. I'm not going to poo-poo him for the fact that he doesn't want illegal people coming into our country, because the truth is, illegal people, once they're here, continue to do illegal things for the most part. We also have a, light, a nation of whites, blacks, and colors of every kind that feel that they have the right to do illegal things. They all feel they have the right to violate federal law. Even people in law enforcement violate federal law. 
to do something locally which is immoral, illegal, or illicit. You see, we've so come a far cry from the reason that our entire nation was founded. Where is the presidential candidate-elect that is going to talk about the history of our land and explain why this stuff is so important? You see, we came here as settlers to find new places to live. It's not that England was so overrun. There was certainly countryside, but there were lords lording over our lives. They weren't the lord of all as far as a god in heaven as those of us of faith and spirituality and metaphysics, etc., like to profess. But there were certainly were landlords, hoarders of land, that were buying taxes on people who were very poor to keep them poor and to keep themselves rich. That's one of the reasons. The other reason that, of course, we came was to be able to pursue our own beneficial ideas about religion, about faith, about spirituality. And we ran into a native cultures that had a totally different way of looking at God. And, of course, those who read the Bible, whatever version it was at the time, weren't really looking at the, the scripture parts that said that Lord God made them all. So we tried to convert everybody, and that sort of got a lot of people brutalized, a lot of people murdered, and as with any nation that you go in and invade, the settlers or the folks who lived there originally are not going to like that too well if you're not friendly about it. We, of course, came in with guns and taught the Indians about guns, just as we did just about in every other nation, China, Japan, etc. They gave up their swords once we gave them the gun. That's a wonderful book. Uh, that I own, giving up the gun. But if I mention that, someone will probably steal that from me too, because I've just found that some of my best Japanese dictionaries are literally have been stolen from my storage locker. You see, I put all my Japanese materials in certain types of bins. And now I find one of those bins is completely empty, devoid of very expensive dictionaries that I purchased personally in very specialty shops that can't be found locally that easily. I sold them to no one. I gave no one the right to take them. I gave no one the right to enter my storage unit at all. Just like I never gave anyone the right to get on my hard drives while they were in storage, either in impound, in a lockup of Indianapolis, or while I was on the road, or literally when I visited any place to utilize them. And I most certainly didn't give any family member the right to get onto my drives and monkey around. But it sure looks like someone did intentionally because now it looks like someone has duplicated drives across drives instead of allowing me the rights to my own materials. As I mentioned a few uh, weeks back, someone has deleted 15 years of Japanese language instruction work, or stolen it. You see, we live in a country where people don't regard rights anymore. When we started this nation, we all had rights. We had the rights to freedom of speech, the rights to freedom of religion, the rights to freedom of movement and mobility. But we have people who deny those rights by participating in stalking, mobbing, and theft of people's personal property. I put things in my travel packs that I need for my life. A metal spoon set I received from a family member so that I can eat any time of day and keep my food clean and keep my mouth from being tainted by plastics that can have tainting in them or that I might be allergic to. And practically, I don't know, but... The reality is every piece of my fur my silverware has been pilfered from my bag in the middle of the night. I had a small set of rounded tip scissors that I was utilizing for, like any man would with a mustache, cleaning himself up a little bit. Those have been completely removed. I needed those, but someone thought they'd take them. I have business cards that I put in my bag based on people that I was planning of giving those businesses cards to so that they would make a new connection and find new relationships for their business, for their professions, for their careers, and those are stolen from me. I find documentation in my bag that I didn't have at all before, and documents that I had before missing completely. It's like a game that someone is playing in their stalking of my life. Let's see how much he recognizes. Let's see how much he pays attention to. I'm sorry, but most of us don't get into every single thing we own every single minute of the day. We go there, we put things away, and we expect that when we go back to that spot, we're going to find what we own, what is our possession, what is our paperwork, what is our property, and it's literally going to be there. I'm pretty sure I know the type of people they are. They're the people who get convinced to do something silly, to do something monkeying around with someone who's asleep, to get convinced that somebody's not lawful or somebody's not moral or somebody's not this or that, so they've convinced themselves by lying to themselves what their rights are in that person's life. They believe they have the right to interfere with someone else's life. Now, who gave them that right? God certainly didn't, because God has a plan for every human being's life. The U.S. government didn't, because 
we have the opportunities in life that we have based on our own educational pursuits, our own career paths, and our own interactions with the professionals we meet along the way in our history of our life. We have the right to decide who we're going to continue on with in history and going forward in our life, meaning those from the past and those that we don't want to reassociate with because maybe we've learned they're not living life the way we'd like to participate with. Or maybe we realize that they're in a moment of time where they're not really ready for making amends for their sins against another person's life. Or maybe we're just not in a spot that we feel like we have anything to offer to them right now. But you know, sometimes in life, when we reach out to someone and they respond, and then they start to play a game with us, it's really on them, not us, in terms of whether or not they're mature enough to have a relationship with anyone at all, is the absolute truth. We also have a lot of people who like to monkey around on other people's computer drives. I literally have been working on a slide presentation for homelessness. It's grown from just a few slides to almost 20. And when I went to look at it the other day at a central library in Indianapolis, I found that my slides were not only out of order, but some of my best slides had been deleted. And I certainly didn't do that. I've also found hard drives and thumb drives that were supposed to be in one place in a bag, put in a different bag on my person, which means somebody is illegally, immorally, and illicitly touching me in the night, which means someone is immorally medicating me in some way. Because I'm not such a sound sleeper that I wouldn't wake up to having someone physically get into my pockets especially my pants pockets or my shirt pockets. Now, when I talk about these things, there's always going to be someone to say, oh, that's not true. He's full of it. He's just telling a story. He's a storyteller. He's a pretty good one, so he's telling a story. The answer is, no, I'm not. I don't lie about things. I don't lie about my life. What I know is that when I lived in an apartment home, much of my property was monkeyed with and damaged and destroyed. I had several computers and a small flip-type camera that was literally destroyed. Someone glued the battery cover shut. In an old computer that belonged to my spouse, that was totally cemented, meaning it was so heavy. Now, granted, computers might have been heavier than the ones I was used to. But it was so heavy, it was like someone had put cement inside it. It wouldn't work anymore. It should have, at the very least, turned on and given me some sort of signal. I had another computer that was a CPU that literally someone locked out. I couldn't even get into my files. Someone locked me out of my own work. I couldn't take things off. I couldn't put things on. couldn't save anything. You see, that's the sort of monkeying business that a maintenance man does, thinking he's got control because no one will ever know, or someone else who's got a key to the place. You see, no one had the lawful right to do any of those things. I'm currently wearing uh, something that I wear for a religious purpose, and I've added to it some precious coins that I was gifted when I lived abroad. There should be three of them. But I only have two, which means the person who was stealing from me in my apartment, and this is how long it's been gone, has that coin. They probably think it's a legitimate piece of coin from that particular nation. It's not. And I'm not about to explain that to them, but if they're listening, they're going to recognize their sin. You see, I had other coins on me from that nation too, and those have gone a little bit pilfered. Every time I literally go back to my storage unit, I find clothes and other things up front. And the things that I set up front so that I could access them for ease of the work I plan to do, completely moved. I don't have the time to do those sort of things. So when I find someone is monkeying around in my property and no one takes it seriously, it's a real problem. But I'm giving you a story about my life and saying, you know, if this stuff can happen to me in my storage locker, what's to say it does not happen to you and yours? What's to say the lock on your house is actually secure? We always see how these young kids are teaching people how to break into homes and do things on YouTube. And allegedly, there's a $20 tube you can just stuff in a lock, any lock, and it'll open. I don't know if it actually breaks the lock or if it just pretends like it's a key. You see, in life, we have the right to our own personhood, to keep ourselves safe from people who want to bodily harm us or interfere with our rights to our own body. The big issue right now down in Georgia is that men are trying to govern women's bodies, and these are strange men, meaning they are strangers to these women. I don't think God in heaven is really going to be pleased with that. I mean, didn't God give us that phrase, That phrase, this is my body? Now, in God's case, in Jesus' case, he said, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. But if you think you have the right to touch another human being's body, Without their permission, what law gives you that right? 
That's usually literally called rape, incest, and other things. When you take someone's clothes off without their permission, that is immoral. When you violate their body with surgeries that they didn't sign up for, that is illegal. When you infiltrate someone's network and start giving them private information that may or may not be true, and those people who receive that information never call that party and say, I got to tell you, this is what gossip is going around. That is somewhat illicit. You see, your reputation to you is just as important as my reputation is to me as anyone's reputation is to themselves. Why? Because it's our reputations that allow us to get employed. Sure, how we look and how we dress might impact where we get employed, but sometimes how we look and how we dress and what we wear keeps us safe in the world. Long ago, when I taught women's self-defense with another fellow police officer who was a pretty good going guy, we literally did that work because the people who had the idea for it didn't know how to teach it. And originally, they just wanted us to teach them what to do so they could teach it, but they recognized they weren't even good teachers. They couldn't carry a tune, meaning they couldn't keep the conversation going. They couldn't dialogue with the women and the men who came to those programs, and they literally just ended up being a funnel source. They'd received the money. They received a benefit from our work, and then we went on. Eventually, I simply timed out of the program and said, listen, if you're not going to do this anymore, I will continue on, and I did. But even those forms that I still had in my possession were monkeyed with, stolen, brought back, etc. A whole case of note cards that I had put together across my travels across six states literally was messed up so that all my organization is a disaster now. I had things put together so that I did, could have shorthand. I could just put parts of the address and then pick the rest up based on the other cards around it. But someone monstrously got into those cards while they were in my car, took the entire case, and then eventually brought it back when I complained about it to my mother. You see, in life, we've got siblings, we've got relatives who think they know what their rights are in our life, but they don't have those rights. There are other people in the world who take away our rights because they think they have the right to do it, and they're going to find out very quickly that the Lord God in heaven has not given them those rights, especially if they lied about it and did immoral things under God's house. You see, a moral man always thinks he knows what's moral, but he is not the Lord of all. He cannot say that God did not create people because it says so very clearly in the Bible, in Genesis, God creates the heaven and earth and everything underneath it. So when moral men try to say that a woman is immoral for what she wants to literally do to her own self, it's really not viable. The Lord gifted us our bodies. He gifted us our, gifted us our loins. And it is not proper to discuss anything on sexuality or propriety, if you will, in the public forum. It is not your job to tell me who I can and can't make love to, and it's certainly not my job to tell you who you can and can't take home with you to do lovemaking in your own house or in a hotel or wherever the heck you decide to go do that in a private space. We are not a society that does those things in public. We show affection, absolutely. All the teenagers today are hugging on each other no matter what they are. And adults do that too. Senior citizens hug one another. But there's that middle ground of age demographic where it's sort of awkward because there might be some chemistry, there might be marriages at stake, and it gets hard. Now in life, when we pick the wrong partner, we lose them through something. Either the Lord says, okay, you've had enough educational time with this individual, it's time for him to move on or her to move on. Or we literally time ourselves out of that relationship because we're not getting where we need to go with them in a partnership. And maybe we didn't ask God's help at all in the beginning of, is this person right for me? And we can sit there and go, well, I should have married so-so. How do you know? Did you really ask God whether or not he was the one you were supposed to marry? Or she was the one you were supposed to be betrothed to? I've seen some young couples come through my own program, and I thought, really? You're a partnership. Whoa, okay. And they might function, but it's not the same as something that's deep, passionate, powerful, and spiritual. Really based on the Holy Spirit. On the Holy Spirit's ability to interact with one's life and say something. Now, as a person of faith, I can talk like that. As a lay pastor about to get a certificate in being a pastor, I can talk like that. Because it says so. But anyone else who doesn't have those credentials is often made fun of if they talk about things like this. See, what people are always looking for is how does that person live their life? Well, if a person is forced into poverty by other people of faith, that's not really showing God's love at all. There are plenty of passages talking about how a person is supposed to be treated, especially if they're in a point time of crisis or loss, 
by their family. It doesn't say come into my life and take over running my life. Most of the time, what happens is that people violate human rights. They violate human dignities. They gossip. They mishandle information. They share private information that should have been kept confidential. They destroy life. We learn in the Lord of the Rings that there's one ring to rule them off, but only Jesus holds that ring. I think that was sort of the underlying theme there, that those men had to fight for the honor to keep good above evil. The only way to keep good above evil is for people to do the right thing. The right thing is always making amends. The right thing is always making time for people who madly love us. The right thing is to make sure we're not labeling something, someone something that they're totally not. And openly, as a person, you have no right to say what the Lord is doing in someone else's soul. We can guesstimate, and we have mediums and other people who have been gifted by the God who can sort of predict. They can foresee things. They get foreshadowing information. But in reality, if you're not one of those people, then you can't possibly know what that's like to have that blessing and that curse. It means every time you think you're going to go somewhere, you might not be getting somewhere, and every time you want to go somewhere, you may never get there. Now in life, we have moments of time to make a difference for someone. Today might be your moment. I'm always challenging my listening audience to make today's moments matter.